Hey everybody, I decided that maybe I should do a video to share last year's December Daily. So this is December 2013's album. Um, I never did a video for it. I shared several pages on my blog, but I never did a little walk through the video. So um, maybe it can inspire you as you go along this year. Um, there are some things that I intend to still add to it that I haven't, and so I will point those out as I go along. But if they're all things that if I never get around to them or I forget, oh well, it's still fine. It's, I, I did actually finish it last year. Um, it's an 8x8 chipboard album. I wanted to do 8x8. I'm not sure why. I do like square, even though that's not what I'm doing this year. Um, but I wanted it smaller than 12x12. 12 12. I just like minier stuff for for the um, December Daily. So this I ordered at scrapbook.com. I don't remember the brand for it. By the way, sorry if I'm shaking. I forgot my tripod again. So um, I'm holding this with my hand. Um, but this is what, it was a plain chipboard album. I just kind of distressed it a bit, just right, I rubbed ink pads across the front is all I did. I did a couple browns, little gold, little um, cream color. And I wrote on the side, bring it around here, 2013 in gold pen. And this ribbon I tied on was from Stampin' Up! It's really old, it's Scallop Tool. Um, I think they still have it actually in the clearance rack, really cheap. It's like $2 a spool, you could go look for it there. Um, and then I put on, this was a doily. Uh, that I die cut and it's like a newsprint type paper and then these stickers right here that one and that one and this one were um, I think my mind's eye they were from the same chipboard sticker sheet right here I didn't really want to thread it on I just used some washi tape I had this gold and white washi um, that was thin enough I just folded it over and trimmed it and then the numbers are Tim Holtz I know they're meant to be distressed but I just kind of wanted them that way um, so that's how I got the stuff on the front and I just tied this on and we open it. I didn't bother doing anything on the inside. I kind of liked the clean look for the inside. And then this was like the intro page. This is an acetate sheet and I just I layered on some paper. This is a line of silver washi. It looks like a lace scallop edge here and a couple of that same chipboard sticker sheet I just put there and this was like really old tinsel trim I have. Snowflakes also from that same Set and the 25 is just like a white glitter thickers set. This blue piece has silver stars and dots on it, and they're like embossed and raised up. And um, there's like a sheet of specialty paper. You'll see this a lot throughout the whole album. And on the back side, I attached that doily to kind of cover the back of all this stuff. I did leave the the you know I didn't really I felt like this looked okay for looking at the back of something um, you know that tricky acetate thing. So then here we have day one, and I was really doing just about everything from my stash last year, um, and I'm doing mostly from my stash this year too, but everything literally last year. So this was the number one from an old, old Stampin' Up! Simply Scrappin'. These little snowflake silver buttony things are also Stampin' Up! I did buy sequins last year. So in here I have these iridescent snowflakes, some silver stars, and some blue dots. Um, some kind of a snowflake star combo rub on that I layered across the pockets and then this was a tag that I just left and didn't turn it into a tag. I think it was from Little Yellow Bicycle. This was like a little file thing, might have been El Studio that I put a picture, a small picture of a cup of eggnog and this is a picture of a video we watched and the journaling there, it's kind of hard to read on here, says it's uh, written on a piece of vellum and it says our first sips of eggnog and the very first Noel, which was a movie my kids watched. We have a tradition of doing December 1st, like kick off December with a short Christmas movie and some eggnog. Then moving over here to the second, we have the two with that same thickers, glittery white set, a little snowflake punch that's layered over the back of what was on the other side. Um, and my daughter here is reading this book, Pete the Cat, that she found at the library, and it's Pete the Cat Saves Christmas, and my kids love Pete the Cat, and we found, we just happened to find this, didn't even know they, that he had saved Christmas. Um, but over here in the journaling, it says, you know, Pete the Cat Saves Christmas. Let me scoot over a bit. Pete the Cat's fairly new to us, but the kids and I fell instantly in love with him. When we discovered there was a Christmas story with Pete, well, we headed straight to the library. The girls especially love to sing along with their microphone. Because you can look up, they all have a website and you can look up their songs and they'll sing along the story while you read. And then here on the third, we like to drive around a lot at night and look at lights. So that, these are just little tiny like thumbnail snapshots of lights and then some of the pockets are filled in with sequins or snowflake. I've got the number three here. 
Um, and then the back, what you're seeing is, I, I left this, I don't know that I'll cover it, I may go back, but it doesn't bother me too much. And this was just a piece of 12 by 12 that I cut down and just kind of used it to divide the clear page with the with the next section. And I kind of just liked that the way it was. I cut the part that had the joy on it on purpose. And this was the back side of that same page. Um, I had intended to put a manifesto here, but I never got around to writing one. I didn't want to add it in later because then it would be like a fake manifesto. On the 4th, and for the, my number 4, I just used right here, it says December 4th. Um, this was a strip. You can maybe see that she's taking down a, a paper chain. My kids have done this every year in preschool, and my youngest has um, always wanted to make hers. So I actually put that. This is like the first string in Bethlehem. The at last, Mary and Joseph rested that that night. The promised baby was born a stable December fourth. There was a strip to read each day with part of the story, and I put Olivia was extremely excited that she got to make a countdown chain this year at school. And then this was a plain wooden ornament. I believe I got it at Michael's, and I just rubbed a green ink pad across it, and um, I don't even remember how I got glue on there because the glitter is in really random places. And then this was a Stampin' Up! stamp, and the, it's stamped on paper that looks like burlap. And I had tried right here to put a, to kind of draw, there's a, there's a star in the stamp, and I tried to kind of go over it with gold pen to make it pop a little more, and it just blended too much with the burlap paper, and so I put a, a wood veneer star there that I believe is Studio Calico. And then for page five, here we have Tidings of Comfort and Joy. And this is like a screenshot of my Spotify Christmas playlist, a glory number five. That's the same tag you saw on the other page. Strip of leftover fabric up here. And a tiny chunk of doily, chunk of doily there too with a little felt tree. And down here, it's hard to read, but um, it'll be way hard to read on camera. But I can tell you that it says this. This year I'm finding myself drawn to more contemporary and faster paced music than usual. I've added quite a bit to my Christmas playlist. Um, and there's like music page backgrounds all through here too, like the whole background is music. And then on page six here, <laughs> there'll be more to this story later, um, it says nice and this is just, I think these are simple stories, papers. Um, it just says the search for the perfect tree and mostly I got pictures of my kids being crazy in the trees more than the tree itself. Um, and then flip being the page. Seven was a simple photo layout, strip of paper, and number seven that came on a page. This is sweater trim. Um, jars of stuff, and then after I tied the lids on, I had made a cranberry vanilla strawberry jam that you'll see in another picture later as I gave it away. And then this is just a piece of um, cardstock I trimmed down. And then over here, this is a little yellow bicycle tag, I believe, that I put an 8 sticker, some more of that my mind's eye chipboard, a little snowflake star, and some washi on. Um, and I just kind of stuck it there because I didn't really have a good place to put a number on this one. And up here we have some chipboard buttons, too. And this was just, uh, it said making our own snowy trees. This is just, we did that Pinterest thing where you put tomato cages and wrap them with the fake greenery and it makes trees and then we threw fake snow on them. Because, I don't know if you can see right here, but my son's in shorts and my daughter's in her Halloween costume and my other daughter's in a skirt even though she has a sweater on. So it was, that was probably one of the days that it was warmer because we don't get snow where we live. So we made our own. Uh, this is a two-page spread for the ninth. And we went to a local church near my kids' school was doing like a snow fun play day where they brought in snow from the mountains nearby. And um, so I put a little tag that I actually tied onto the middle and it kept getting away so I ended up taping it down so it would stay here. Um, pictures of them intertubing down the snow slide, and there's some punched um, snowflakes that I layered with snowflake sequins and a little bit of bling. There was enough snow for snowball fights. I got this one on with washi tape. These are This right here is scraps of paper from a snow day thing I did a long time ago when we went to the mountains. And then there was hot chocolate to be had and snowball fights to do, and um, I also put some journaling around this one. Josiah took it quite, took to it quickly. The kids were introduced to snowball fighting for the first time in real life, which my daughters decided they didn't like that. It was cold when they hit you. Then over here, I just took this tag. I don't remember where it's from. I just circled the tenth that already had the calendar on it for the number 10. And I tr there's some more of that fabric that you saw on another page. This I trimmed out of a 12 by 12 piece that had a bunch of word art. And this was like a 12 by 12 piece I trimmed apart too, and that was like a baking themed one. Got sugar cloves, nutmeg, all spice, cinnamon. And these are just pictures of my kids decorating sugar cookies. 
and the other half of that is um, it's a picture of the basket. I made three of them that way I took to my friends and I documented this one pretty well. I think I stuck a little special delivery thing up there. Um, this one up here says, this year the kids made cookie decorating pails for the kids and families we delivered to. We went to the Berries, the Masons, and the Mans. Um, so when I took my baskets with other stuff in it, they had a basket of goodies for those families' kids. And I took a picture of this recipe box because I keep my recipes in binders and things. But I had this special wooden box that I liked that I bought a long time ago that I really just used for family recipes and like special recipes. And when I had it out for my sugar cookie recipe that was my mom's, I, um, I just, it gave me a nostalgic Christmassy feeling. So I decided to go ahead and take a picture of it and include it here in the baking section. And, um, and I, I journaled about it right onto the photograph with why it says getting out the family recipe box to bake some of our yearly treats. Sugar cookie and dill bread are among them. Those are both recipes of my mom's. Adding some new things this year and then packaging them up to deliver to friends. And then I also made a little strip here that says this year the baskets included chai spiced fudge, dill bread, cranberry vanilla strawberry jam, salted dark chocolate maple bacon bark, peppermint marshmallows, and mochaccino marshmallows. So... Um, that way I remember what I put in the baskets here that I, we took about. The 11th is a two-page spread, and this is um, the church my daughters go to preschool at, or both went to preschool at. Um, they do this awesome, awesome thing every year that's way better than a Christmas show. It's called Christmas Encounter, and it's, you walk around through the church through different stations that lead you from, like, the prophecies about Jesus all the way through to his birth, one scene at a time, and it's just cool, and it's very moving every time we go, and... I find it hard to be moved myself. So this is a bookmark that like told us, my kid, daughter brought home from preschool told us about it, but I like to use it as a title, Christmas Encounters, right there on there. But I have a lot of little sections of just like gold glimmer paper, or yeah, it's gold. And this was always my favorite part. They turn their gymnasium into the whole theme where the angels tell the shepherds about Jesus being born. There's live sheep there and this choir and the light, that's the way they do it just always just seems angelic and awesome. And then I just liked the word peace in the display, so I took a picture of that. And then this is another part of one of the displays that's around various parts of the church. Another picture of the sheep because they're awesome. And then they end it with a place for the kids to do crafts that have, you know, like ornaments and things and um, have hot chocolate. So that was a two-page spread. I always love it. The 12th and 13th, I just kind of made a match because they're similar in topic. The 12th was just about having eggnog lattes, which I'm having my first one of the season right now, and red cups. And I just took a picture of it and I cut it out cut out the shape of the cup and then I wrote right on it with a white pen and these are random um you, I don't know if you can see on the cup there's like leaves and stuff and ornaments well I had an extra cup from another day and I cut them out and used that so that's where the the stuff comes from is they're actually cut from an, another cup that I cleaned out and cut apart and use them as like you know my embellishments there's a 12th and 13th just in random red stickers that I already had some more of this flocked paper you see over here it's really old stampin up stuff and I'm by really old I mean like really old um this up here says peppermint marshmallows and chocolate covered marshmallow candy cane stirs and we have stir sip and enjoy seeing us do that and I just did this right in photoshop I just wrote it right on there and printed it um star shaped peppermint marshmallows we made together and then the kids and I made the candy canes that are stuck in the marshmallow and then rolled in chocolate and dipped in something we had some fun stirs one day um, two-page spread again for the 14th. You may notice it was several days ago that we picked out the tree. I'll get to that. These are just some shots of my favorite ornaments. Um, random scrap Christmas paper I jazzed up a bit with some sequins and glimmer dots and stuff. Um, this is like a canvasy thicker. Um, I love line and lamb ornaments. It's hard to see that one in the camera here, but it's awesome. This is an old ornament I love that one of my students gave me back when I taught. The title here is The Tree Saga with random letters that I had. Some burlap and some Victorian lace stuff there. My son looking at the tree. Sorry, that's a picture. That is a, an ornament my mom and I made years and years ago. We used to make an ornament every year and this was one where we covered the ornaments with lace or pretty fabric or something and then arranged flowers and greenery and stuff around the top and I forgot I had taken a picture of that, and my, my mom died this summer, so it just kind of caught me off guard to see that and instantly remember her. One of those things, you know, where it just kind of things sneak up on you. Um, down here, my journaling says, we got our tree late, the 7th, and didn't get it all decorated until the 14th. 
there were copious issues with the lights. Half of our strands were out, and then we couldn't find replacements because everything is now LED. We had to finally just take the plunge and swap to LED lights, which I knew we would do someday, but it was not in our budget for this, for this last year. Okay, this is a random page that I would not do every year, but I had to this year. We did our own family pictures, which you'll see the one that made the cut later. It's not that great. Um, tore apart the living room and made like a Pinterest background. I, I kept this picture in here because you could see what we did, just to remind me of where we were. Um, but I call this one the outtakes. And I got a little a chipboard star here where I wrote 15 on it for day 15. Um, we took like 115 pictures. We were just taking a bazillion because we have kids and you know you got to take a lot to get one good one because they're crazy. And when I went to load them up, my youngest daughter, hmm, look at that face there and this face here. Like she was doing random, like an 80 picture, she had a random funky face. Like she was, she was just playing around making funny faces. <laughs> And there were just all these random pictures I wasn't expecting when I uploaded them, so I put them in here and did an outtake spread. Um, on this one, I got my son, and I it put, not sure what he's so stressed about. Is it his hair? Because he's really, like, he's just grabbing his head like, what? That is my husband just being my husband. I didn't realize that my husband snapped a shot when I was adjusting my shirt and pants, and my son was looking at me like, whoa. And then um, right down here, my middle daughter, the journalist says, I guess that's her fashionista pose because she's all got her hip cocked out and her hand on her hip. And This is an old thing. I don't even remember when I got it. It says Marion Bright, and then there's a big, like, bronzy sequin there. This one says, I'm not sure she can take a non-funny photo, and that's pointing down to Miss Olivia being crazy, and now she's crazy with Dad. I know she's blurry in this one, but it's still another, like, example of her craziness. And I have gold and white washi tape all over this spread. Um, partly to keep sequins in and partly just to decorate it up and give it a little pizzazz. For the 16th, we are at, let's see, a school lunch with a reindeer. I took, this is my son's, and I took a picture just because I made that reindeer sandwich. Um, I don't remember what that's from. That's also the back of the page in front. I covered the back of that thing, that little white metal thing that said Merry and Bright. This is a 4x6 part card that I cut apart to slide into all these squares because this was one of those with the tons of squares. And then on the 17th, this is um, teacher gifts. This is the outside, that's the inside. I used to make these for my parents when I was a teacher, for my volunteer parents. It's like, it's those Ghirardelli bags of chocolate, and it's got like pizzazz card stock folded around it to make it a cute little baggie. And this is in Spanish, because my kids are in a Spanish program, so instead of Merry Christmas, it says Feliz Navidad y Prospero Año Nuevo. I don't speak Spanish, so forgive my white girl accent. And this is also another one of those little yellow bicycle tags. Um, 18th pictures from my son's Christmas show at school where they were all singing Christmas songs. And just take notice there that everybody has a hat on except for my son who never said, I need a Santa hat. And when I asked him why he didn't have one and everyone else did, he said, well, my teacher said if we have one to go ahead and bring it. If not, we don't. I said, well, we have one. And he was like, oh, okay. You know, one of those little boy moments, I guess. And then the 19th is the other two. Um, luckily, they did not overlap because that would have been hard. But my middle daughter in kinder first, front and center is what that says. She's right there singing her kindergarten show. And then we went back to her classroom and made gingerbread houses together. And then I jetted over to my youngest at preschool and went to her Christmas thing they did in the classroom. And she, her birthday is the day after Christmas, and this was her last day before break. So that's why she's got a birthday crown on because um, they were celebrating that as well. And then on the 20th, um, that was the Friday before Christmas break started, so there's a picture of them watching another Christmas movie, and the journaling says here, celebrating the first night of holiday break with popcorn and watching Boz, and the 20 stickers there. This is what ended up being our Christmas card. It goes with this half of the spread right here. I glued it on the back of one of our Christmas envelopes because I decorated those two, and I wanted to show that somehow, and this was how I figured to do it without... I didn't necessarily want to tuck the card inside, so um, I just glued it onto the back as if it was one side thing, punched holes and threaded it on, and then some more of that paper I loved, and I took a picture of the stack just because I liked the way the little sides looked with the snowflakes and the stuff going down, and just now getting our cards out on the 21st. Deck the halls here on the 22nd. Okay, now here's one way you know that I didn't finish. I started them on time, but it didn't finish them on time because these titles right here, Deck the Halls, and on the next day I'm a rap star, 
These are, I cut out with my silhouette, which was a Christmas present, so I obviously did these titles 